point is, my point is, when you work together, and you're committed to working together, and you accomplish your goal, everybody benefits. Everybody benefits. True, true. What's your favorite pie? Give me a pie. Somebody name something. Sweet potato. Sweet potato pie. <laughs> what goes in? What goes in the ingredients of a sweet potato pie? Sweet potatoes. What else? Sugar. Sugar. What else? Butter. 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 What else? Butter. Milk. And when you put all that together and you eat it, it tastes good, doesn't it? Got ingredients. But what happens if you leave out one ingredient? It don't taste right. It's not a sugar. It's not a sweet potato pie. That's my point. You gotta work as a team. When you work as a team, you make a commitment to that team and a commitment to yourself, you're gonna do the best you can. And it can happen. I gave, let me have When I ran for mayor, I had a fundraiser in East Chicago, Bishop Grant, Tavis Grant Church. I don't, a couple of you might know him. He's been up here a few times. And it was in his church, and the guest speaker at that time was Jesse Jackson, Jr. Yeah, mm. Je during his young days, Jesse Jackson, Jr. And, and, and I had a slogan. At that time, when I was running against Pastrick, who had been around 30 plus years, the big giant, and him, go, David, come along. And my slogan was simple. <clears throat> my slogan was, yes, we can. That's the slogan that Jesse Jackson Jr. took from me to give to Barack Obama. And that slogan was the catalyst that prepared Barack Obama to become President of the United States. And so what I would like to do is relive that slogan here in South Bend. Nothing is impossible. No, it's not. Nothing is impossible. If you're committed to making it work. Committed to the group that you win, or organization, and you make a commitment to yourself. You're gonna do the best you can. And you never let anybody tell you what you can't do. When you get together and work as one body, you can accomplish anything, anything. When Barack Obama ran for president the first time, what did they tell him? Work, you can't win. You don't have anything, you don't have any organization, nobody gonna support you. So why bother? Well, guess what? He's been there two terms now. Right, right. Two terms now. And in and, and South Bend, there's deficiencies you've got. You're looking for opportunities. You're looking for new leadership. You're looking for someone to start speaking about the attack on education when it comes to teachers. You're looking for someone to start directing the dollars within your community so you can have some construction jobs, regular employment. You're looking for someone to start looking and directing some attention and dollars in your community for health issues that you've got, housing issues that you've got. How are you going to change those things if, in fact, no one is listening to you? What I say, you've got to listen. So you ask yourself whether or not the current administration that you have now, are they listening to you? If they're listening to you, they would respond to you. If they had respond to you, you wouldn't be here today. Think about that now. Think about that. If they had listened to you and they responded to your concerns, you would not be here today. And you're here today for one reason. You've got a bright shining star that is willing to listen, that is willing to speak out, that's not going to be taking a back seat to anybody when it comes to concerns of this community. You don't get that every day. There is young people in different areas, particularly in Gary, they're losing population. Gary used to be the largest city in Lake County. Now it's not. Hammond, Indiana is. You know why? A lot of young people in Gary, when they get a skill, a talent, an education, they don't come back. You ask them, why don't you come back to your hometown? Well, Mr. Randolph, I, I went back to my hometown. I wanted to get involved with politics. I wanted to get involved with that. But I couldn't get any support from the community. So I said, well, why stay there then? Let me go somewhere where I'm get some support. So they left. OK? That same thing has happened throughout the state, in Evansville, Fort Wayne, Lafayette. That's got to change. 
you're going to have a dying community as a result, if in fact that continues to occur. Do you want to stop that trend in South Bend? Yes. yes. Well, one of the ways you can do is to start supporting your own. You've got a lot of young people with talent, with skills. They want an opportunity to show what they can do. The only way that they can see it is your support. If you don't give them support, then you will not give them an opportunity to shine. And when you give them the opportunity to shine, you benefit from that. Okay? Your person today, he's made a very bold step. That's a bold step to run for the mayor of South Bend. Yes. Right, right. To my knowledge, it's only the second or third time an African American has ever ran for mayor in South Bend. And I remember someone saying, well, how can an African American relate to an entire community and benefit everybody? Well, that myth was dispelled for me when a certain individual in Chicago became mayor of Chicago and his name was Harold Washington. Remember the first time he ran for mayor, he had the, the Vidoliak 9, you're fighting against him and he barely won, but he won. But the second time around, it was overwhelmingly. He just happened to die early in the second term, but the point is, he demonstrated to the people in Chicago, all people, that he was for their best interest, and he was doing an outstanding job. So don't let anybody tell you just because Henry happens to be an African American, he can't work for everybody. He can. The very fact that he was on a city council, you elected him there, he was effective there. No one is going to be effective, okay? And this is how you know he was effective, because when they start focusing on him, yeah. When other members start saying, you this, and start criticizing you, that's when you know you're affected. Why? Because you got their attention. Yes. And once you get your attention, you can get them to go ahead and respond. Okay? You don't need a quiet wheel. You need a squeaky wheel. And with Henry, you got a squeaky wheel. Now, his father says he's junior to me. I said, well, he could be junior to you. And then I think about elections and catchy phrases and all that. And so somebody said, Ron, Henry, Ron. My thing is just Henry Ron, period. <laughs> Henry Ron, or you can say Junior Ron, whatever you can say. But the point is, most important point I want to get to here is that you got one of your own who stepped out there. That's right. On faith. That's right. He had the courage. Amen. Okay? and the willingness to sacrifice himself for your benefit. Right. Now, in order for him to be successful, right. he's going to need your support. Right. Your support in terms of effort, manpower, right. your support being vocal, right. your support in terms of money, because it's not free. Right. In order for him to get his message out to the community, it costs money. Right. And he's going to need every last one of you. Each one of you has some influence somebody within your family or your neighbors, okay? Each one of you can know at least 10 people and talk to 10 people about Henry. Henry Davis for mayor. Convince them to support him as well in terms of their efforts and the funds and whichever way they can. And get that person get 10 people and so on and so on and so on. And so when the time comes, if the commitment is there, you're true to your faith, you're true to yourself, you're true to Henry, you're true to the cause. You're going to end up with Henry Davis Jr. being the mayor of South Bend. <laughs> now, I don't live here. I don't live, I've been here a few times, but I don't live here. But I have faith and confidence in all young people I'm trying to encourage in terms of getting involved. Okay, from South Bend to Fort Wayne to Lafayette to Evansville. And I told Henry, I'm going to be supporting him 100%, whatever I can do in terms of helping that. And I indicate to you that we're going to need some funds. Yes. So I scraped in my barrel. And guess what? What? I got a $500 check for him right now. So if I can do that, you can do the same. Yeah. 
If you do the same, he won't have any problem financially in terms of pursuing what he needs to do for your benefit. Amen. So I say to the people today, Henry Davis for me. Henry Davis for mayor. Henry Davis for mayor. And then, and then, people say to you that he can't do it. He can't win. You're going to say what to him? Yes, he I can't hear you. Yes, he Let me hear it one more time. Yes, he You got to do it louder. Yes,